for today's adventure, we're gonna be visiting the final resting place, the final home, and ultimately, the death location of Hollywood legend, Marilyn Monroe. She really needs no introduction. You know her, I know her. Very beautiful woman, very sad story, and a very strange story. A lot of conspiracy theories. One of the most famous stars in Hollywood history is dead at 36. Marilyn Monroe was found dead in bed under circumstances that were in tragic contrast to her glamorous career as a comic talent. On the surface, she seemed to have such a zest for life. Her international appeal took her from command appearances to the other side of the world and entertainment for Korean GIs. The star led a far from normal childhood and had 12 sets of foster parents, leading her to say in her last interview that she was never used to being happy, so it wasn't something she ever took for granted. She never let her personal feelings interfere with her job, and she was the idol of the GIs, the animation of foxhole dreams. She found no happiness in marriage. Her second husband was baseball immortal Joe DiMaggio, and that marriage ended as had her first in divorce. Her third husband was playwright Arthur Miller, and they too separated. Miss Monroe played in 23 films since her debut in 1950, films that grossed $200 million. The Golden Girl received 5,000 fan letters a week, and to those fans, she never let any personal problems dim her screen glamour. Despite flashes of temperament and tantrums, she turned in performances that kept her among the greatest box office favorites in motion picture history. Marilyn Monroe is interred here at Pierce Brothers Westwood Memorial Park amongst a bunch of other famous people like Don Knotts and Heather O'Rourke and Betty Page. But today, we're just here for Marilyn Monroe. Now here's the thing about the cemetery, and I'm gonna turn this way because we're gonna go in there in just a moment. It's a very small cemetery. Our movements are gonna be very limited and I can only show so much. So I really can't turn the camera upon myself, so everything you see from here on out is just gonna be Marilyn Monroe's grave and I mean ultimately that's what you came here for right so it's a win-win situation for you it's a beautiful cemetery it's rather small and it's hidden believe it or not it's a hidden cemetery skyscrapers everywhere and then there's this peaceful cemetery and just in case I do turn the camera on myself or Jessica I do want to point out that face coverings are mandatory at all times and social distancing of six feet is mandatory here in the cemetery. Not gonna be a problem. Westwood Memorial Park really isn't that big. And finding the final resting place of Marilyn Monroe really wasn't that hard either. And about the center of your screen, in that corner, is where she is. I find it a little odd that this bench isn't facing Marilyn Monroe herself, but there is a bench here dedicated. It says, in remembrance of Marilyn Monroe from her many fans. I feel like it should be facing her, which is right there, but it's not. And there she is, the final resting place of Marilyn Monroe. A simple plaque that reads 1926 to 1962, and a vase full of flowers. Looking at it right now, today there's only a few lipstick kisses. But I'm sure if you go online you can see all kinds of different people that have kissed the stone here. But that's how it looks today. I don't know why I didn't know this, but interred right next to Marilyn Monroe is the founder of Playboy magazine, Hugh Hefner. Which I guess kind of makes sense because 
At one point, Marilyn Monroe did pose for Playboy, but she was a sex symbol of the 50s and 60s, 1926 to 2017. Crazy. There's one more story, one more legend to talk about before we leave. And not only does it include Marilyn Monroe, but it's also about this gentleman who's interred above her, a gentleman by the name of Richard F. Poncher. Now it's believed, it is said, that he went to great lengths to acquire this crypt. And in doing so, he requested that he be buried, well, interred upside down, forever face down on top of Marilyn Monroe. It's a legend, I'm not sure how true it is, but that's what's said. Oh yeah, and one more thing, this flower here, after her death, Joe DiMaggio, one of her husbands, always brought flowers every single day and placed them here. Today we're about to walk down 5th Helena Drive to probably one of the most famous houses here in Los Angeles, well, Brentwood. It's a beautiful street. Very quaint. But way down here at the end of this road that says it's not a through street, it's like a private drive, is the final home of Marilyn Monroe. The gate is situated right underneath this beautiful tree at the end of the cul-de-sac. And just looking at it, not much has changed different pictures that I've seen online. If we come over this way, just walking around, there's the mailbox with the street address, 12305. And right next to it, even those are the same. August 4th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe spent most of her last day here at her Brentwood home, where she locked herself in her bedroom. Somebody came to check on her and found that she was unresponsive, so they broke a window to get into her bedroom. Her death was ruled a suicide, or an accidental overdose. But like every other story, every other celebrity death here in Hollywood, there's always something more to it, isn't it? Anybody who's known anything about her over the years, some will say that she was even murdered, that she was even tied to the Kennedys in some way, shape, or form. Although none of it was ever proven, but this right here, this was her last address. Wherever I come,